It was a peaceful August morning in 1976 when a group of five Korean Service Corps personnel and a UNC security team set out to prune a tree in the Joint Security Area. The team, led by Captain Arthur Boniface, was unarmed, but they had brought Maddox and axes to trim the branches. But their peaceful mission quickly turned into a nightmare. As they began their work, a group of North Korean soldiers appeared, commanded by Senior Lieutenant Paxual. The UNC soldiers had nicknamed him Lieutenant Bulldog due to his history of confrontations. At first, Pack and his subordinates simply observed the pruning, but after 15 minutes, he abruptly demanded that the pruning stop. Captain Boniface ordered the detail to continue and turned his back on the North Koreans. Enraged by this defiance, Pack sent a runner across the bridge of no return, and soon, a truck full of North Korean guards carrying crowbars and clubs crossed the bridge and disembarked. Again, Pack demanded that the pruning stop, and when Captain Boniface ignored him, Pack shouted, Kill the bastards! Using axes dropped by the tree pruners, the North Korean soldiers attacked the UNC team, brutally killing Captain Boniface and badly injuring the others. First Lieutenant Mark Barrett managed to escape by jumping over a low wall and hiding in a nearby depression, but he was soon found and killed by the North Koreans. The entire fight lasted only 20 to 30 seconds, but the damage had been done. The UNC forces dispersed the North Korean guards and placed Captain Boniface's body in their truck, but there was no sign of Barrett. The North Korean guards were seen behaving strangely, taking turns going down into the depression where Barrett was hiding, and the UNC guards at operating post number 5 were eventually informed that Barrett was missing. A search and rescue squad was sent out and found Barrett, but he died on the way to the hospital. The attack was recorded by multiple cameras, but the footage only serves as a chilling reminder of the brutality that occurred that day in the Joint Security Area. Captain Boniface and First Lieutenant Barrett lost their lives in a senseless act of violence. The incident at the Joint Security Area had barely ended when the North Korean media began airing reports of the fight, painting a very different picture of what had occurred. They claimed that American hoodlums had attacked their guards without provocation and that their own guards had been forced to defend themselves. But the American version of events was very different. The North Koreans had planned and orchestrated the attack, and within hours of the incident, Kim Jong-il, the son of the North Korean leader, was using the attack to further his own political agenda. He addressed the Conference of Non-Aligned Nations in Sri Lanka, presenting a prepared document describing the incident as an unprovoked attack on North Korean guards led by American officers. He then introduced a resolution asking the conference to condemn the grave U.S. provocation and called for the withdrawal of American forces from Korea and the dissolution of the UNC. The members of the conference passed the resolution, and the CIA considered the attack to have been planned by the North Korean government. The readiness levels for American forces in South Korea were increased, and military action was considered, but ultimately, it was decided that the best course of action was to maintain a defensive stance until they could think of an appropriate action. The incident at the Joint Security Area had left the UNC with a decision to make how to respond to the brutal attack on their soldiers. They knew that they needed to take action, but they didn't want to risk further escalation. So, they came up with a plan to send a clear message to North Korea the treat that had been the cause of the altercation would be cut down with overwhelming force. The operation, named after the mythical lumberjack Paul Bunyan, was carefully planned and executed by General Richard G. Stilwell and his staff at the UNC headquarters in Seoul. It was a show of force meant to chase a North Korea without causing further escalation. The parameters of the operation were decided in the White House, where U.S. President Gerald Ford had held crisis talks with his advisors. They were determined to send a clear message to North Korea, but they also knew that they couldn't risk further escalation. Operation Paul Bunyan was a mission of revenge. Three days after the brutal killing of two American soldiers in the Joint Security Area, a convoy of 23 American and South Korean vehicles, named Task Force Vera after Lieutenant Colonel Victor S. Vera, commander of the United States Army Support Group, 
drove into the JSA without any warning. The North Koreans were taken by surprise, as they had only one observation post staffed at that hour. The convoy was made up of two eight-man teams of military engineers equipped with chainsaws to cut down the tree, accompanied by two 30-man security platoons from the Joint Security Force, armed with pistols and axe handles. The first platoon secured the northern entrance to the JSA via the Bridge of No Return, while the second platoon secured the southern edge of the area. Simultaneously, a team from B Company, commanded by Captain Walter Seifried, had activated the detonation systems for the charges on Freedom Bridge and had the 165mm main gun of the M728 Combat Engineer Vehicle aimed mid-span to ensure that the bridge would fall if the order was given for its destruction. A 64-man task force of the South Korean 1st Special Forces Brigade accompanied them, armed with clubs and trained in Taekwondo, supposedly without firearms. But as soon as they parked their trucks near the bridge of no return, they started throwing out the sandbags that lined the truck bottoms and handing out M16 rifles and M79 grenade launchers that had been concealed below them. The South Korean forces shouted challenges at the North Koreans across the bridge, shouting that they were ready for a fight. The operation was heavily armed, with a U.S. infantry company and 20 utility helicopters and seven Cobra attack helicopters circling behind them. Behind these helicopters, B-52 Strato Fortresses came from Guam, miscorded by USF-4 Phantom II from Kunsan Air Base, and South Korean F-5 and F-86 fighters were visible flying across the sky at high altitude. FEs from Osan Air Force Base, South Korea. Tegu Air Base, F-111 bombers of the 366th Tactical Fighter Wing out of Mountain Home Air Force Base were stationed, and f Fork and f Ford Phantoms from the 18th TFW Caden Air Base and Clark Air Base were also deployed. The aircraft carrier USS Midway Task Force had also been moved to a station just offshore. Task Force Vera consisted of 813 men, Almost all of the men of the United States Army Support Group of which the Joint Security Force was a part, a South Korean reconnaissance company, a South Korean Special Forces company that had infiltrated the river area by the bridge the night before, and members of a reinforced composite rifle company from the 9th Infantry Regiment. In addition, every UNC force in the rest of South Korea was on battle alert. The engineers immediately started cutting down the tree while standing on the roof of their truck. North Korea quickly responded with about 150 to 200 troops, who were armed with machine guns and assault rifles. The North Korean troops arrived mostly in buses but did not leave them at first and watched the events unfold. The task force Vera was heavily armed and the display of force was intimidating. The North Koreans quickly got out of their buses and began setting up two man machine gun positions, but they watched in silence as the tree was felled in 42 minutes. The tree stump, around 6 meters tall, was deliberately left standing. The operation was a success, and the message was sent. The attempt at intimidation was apparently successful, and the accumulation of force blew their fucking minds. Operation Paul Bunyan was a mission of revenge to send a message to North Korea. The operation was carried out peacefully, but the tension was high. The incident led to increased tensions along the Korean demilitarized zone, with concern that it could spark a wider conflict. Shots were fired at the U.S. helicopter that carried Major General Morris Brady, but no one was injured. The United Nations command had demanded that the North Koreans punish those involved and make adequate reparations to the families of those killed and injured. Later, on the day of Operation Paul Bunyan, it received a message from Kim Il-sung expressing regret at the incident. While not going far enough to satisfy a previously discussed acceptable northern response, the U.S. administration decided to emphasize that as a step in the right direction as it was the first time since the Korean War armistice in 1953 that the North had accepted responsibility for violence along the DMZ. The Joint Security Area's advance camp was later renamed Camp Boniface in honor of the slain company commander. 
The incident also prompted the separation of personnel from the two sides within the JSA as a way to avoid further incidents. An axe and an axe handle that were supposedly used in the incident are on display in the North Korea Peace Museum. General William J. Livesey publicly carried a swagger stick that was carved from wood collected from the tree at the center of the incident. Moon Jae-in, who would later become the 12th president of South Korea, was part of the 64 man detachment from the Republic of Korea 1st Special Forces Brigade that participated in Operation Paul Bunyan. Thank you again for watching our content. We are always open to hearing your thoughts in the comments. Your feedback helps us to improve. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps our channel grow.